Uh, I live in Austin. I'm pretty much a Django hobbyist, wannabe programmer who does a little bit of, uh, of Python. I want to talk about the mezzanine uh, CMS framework. Uh, CMS, most of you know, is content management system. And if you've looked around the web, most everybody has looked at, uh, say, for example, a blog would be a, good, a basic type of CMS. There's pretty much three types of people and products, uh, it seems. First of all, there's probably what this audience represents, the people who proudly want to do it themselves. And you know they regard it as a rite of passage to write their own blogging software. Secondly, there's people that use WordPress, which is probably 99% of what you see out there, maybe a little bit of blogger. The third category would be uh, some other PHP program. And believe me, I've looked at a couple of dozen of them and have been through them and was about to use another one uh, this time around when I found Mezzanine CMS. So I don't have any visuals here. The website is, is mezzanine.jupo. I think it's org or .net. You can find it very easily. It's an Australian guy named Stephen McDonald, and he, what he has done, uh, I'm gonna, the title of this talk is, is 10 things that uh, I like about the Mezzanine CMS. So first, it's built on the Django framework, which means you get all of the Django built-in things, the admin, the user groups. It, uh, if you pip install it, you will get uh, south, and you will get a whole bunch of other packages come automatically to you. Number two, you get the basics. You get a blog. You get search engine optimization, and you get a, a basic photo gallery. Uh, so to start off, you have something that you can easily extend. Number three, you uh, have some useful integrations because I don't know about you, but I don't want to write all of the social media stuff myself. So you get uh, Twitter uh, integration. You can ig integrate your Twitter feed. Discus for managing your forum posts. Uh, you can still approve comments. Uh, you, you can do it built in if you want to, but you can also use something like that. Ask a I think it's called, for spam filtering. Uh, number four, a reason would be uh, the extras that you get a little bit beyond Django. You get a file browser and you get an image uploader, it, automatic image scaling. It works very well. Number five, real big thing for me, documentation. There are so many great Python projects out there, but you would never know it from looking at the website or your first pass on them. If you go to that site, you'll see beautifully organized docs, the product of one person who keeps, keeps pretty tight control over it. And every time he does a point release, the docs are updated. I never bother to download them because I can always view the latest things on the website. And it does tell you everything, not just the basic stuff, but the, the API of the product. Uh, number six, uh, you can extend override, of course, because it's Python. Uh, the basic page models that they have from which things like the blog posts are inherited. You can add your own content types. And you can add page processors to do interesting stuff uh, before and after. Number seven, a real cool thing is it comes with uh, Fabric scripts. Fabric uh, helps you deploy things. And so it will, out of the box, uh, install, if you don't have it, G-Unicorn. Uh, actually. Uh, put it up on your staging or production server. Nginx has the config files, memcached, all the stuff I wasn't using before, it automatically takes care of for you. And then you can tweak the fabric scripts if you don't like what it provides. Number eight, uh, bootstrap and uh, integration. So you have a very nice CSS framework and JavaScript working for you immediately. And what, what's really important, if you haven't heard of Twitter Bootstrap, is it makes your, for me, it, makes, it will make your website look good on a mobile device without you having to do any additional work. It automatically scales things for that. Uh, number nine, inline editing. Not big for developers, uh, but this means that you can see a page on the site, and if you have administrative privileges, you can click on it and edit it, save it, and then it renders back again. You may find this hard to understand, but for end users, if you, somebody else uses your site, they don't like to use the administrative panels. They're used to viewing something, making a change, then they sing it again as it appears. And so this is a useful feature. Finally, number 10, haven't used it, but it does have a shopping cart module called Cartridge. So if you plan on selling products, you could extend the site to do that without anything else. So I think you should check into it. It's a really cool product, and I haven't found anything else like it in the Python world.